uh, students this is the second lecture on the weldability of the metals and uh, in this presentation uh, we will be mainly taking up first uh, the different uh, mechanisms which are used for grain refining uh, the grain grain refining uh, in the weld zone and uh, uh, the different methods uh, which are based on the, those grain refinement mechanisms uh, then we will see that uh, different reactions which uh, take place in the weldment uh, such as the gas metal reactions, slag metal reactions or the liquid metal reactions and uh, the solid state reactions. And these reactions uh, frequently lead to the development of uh, the defect or the discontinuity of one or other kind. So, what is the mechanism behind those uh, and uh, behind the development of those discontinuities in the weld region and uh, the in the heat affected zone that uh, will be taken up in this presentation. So, as far as content is concerned, the grain refinement mechanisms and uh, the approaches based on those mechanisms, uh, then gas metal reaction, the liquid metal reaction, uh, which uh, mostly leads to the development of uh, the solidification cracks and many times inclusions also and then solid state reactions uh, which will be involving like uh, hardening and embrittlement of the heat affected zone and then uh, cracking in form of uh, the tearing of uh, the region very close to the fusion boundary. So, that is the hardened heat affected zone subjected to the cracking in form of uh, this is called a lamellar tearing and then another type of cracking which takes place in the heat affected zone again uh, is called hydrogen induced cracking which is uh, mainly promoted by the hydrogen. So, all these uh, reactions will be occurring in, in the solid state while uh, this one will be uh, taking place in the liquid state and uh, this one will also be taking place in the liquid state. So, uh, uh, as far as the grain refinement mechanisms are concerned, we know that uh, the refinement of the grain structure, especially the fine equexed grain structure is important for better mechanical performance of the weld. Uh, uh, and uh, at the same time, this kind of grain structure also helps in reducing the problems related with the uh, cracking uh, like solidification cracking in the weld zone. And uh, therefore, it is uh, frequently desired to have the refined, very fine uh, equexed grain structure in the weld region. So, in order to achieve the refined uh, equexed grain structure in the heat affected zone, various uh, mechanisms are used and these mechanisms basically are based on the simple approach of in uh, having the large number of the nucleants which can be developed in the weld region. So, uh, that during the grow, growth stage all those nucleants can uh, be there in form of the individual grains. So, uh, basic objective is to have the large and large number of the nucleants in the weld region during the solidification, so that the same number of grains can be produced. In the weld zone, if we are having the fewer number of the nucleants in the initial stage during solidification, then we will be having very coarse grain structure and to uh, therefore, to achieve the refined grain structure, uh, the number of nucleants present uh, in the weld metal during the solidification uh, is increased and for that purpose, various mechanisms which are used are like dendrite fragmentation, dendrite detachment inoculation and uh, the surface uh, uh, nucleation. These are the four different uh, approaches which are based on the different mechanisms. Just to understand, we will be, we'll be uh, using this schematic diagram to understand these mechanisms. Here, uh, we know that uh, the, when weld metal uh, solidifies, uh, this is the weld pool which is uh, solidifying. So, it will be solidifying, uh, the solidification will be beginning at the weld fusion boundary. Uh, initially in form of the planar structure and then some cells, uh, cellular structure is uh, developed and thereafter uh, we get uh, the dendrites, a uh, dendritic structure is developed. These dendrites are present uh, in the, uh, just after the cellular structure and then we have very uh, fine equexed grain structure. So, in order to have uh, the very fine grain structure, it is necessary that more number of nucleants we have. So, to have those nucleants in this weld region, 
um, somehow uh, the, gra the grains which are in the growing uh, the in uh, growing growth stage they are broken by the disturbance in the liquid metal so when these uh, the grains which are growing are broken into the liquid metal and they will be present in form of very fine fragments here and there since these are of the same metal system so they will be able to act as a nucleant for other uh, for the liquid metal uh, which is, is still in the solidification stage. So, uh, the break fracture of these uh, the, uh, the, uh, the fracture of these um, uh, the dendrites and the grains which are growing in the weld zone uh, leads to the production of the large number of uh, uh, the nucleants, uh, large number of uh, the fragments and which uh, are able to act as a nucleant for uh, refining the grain structure. So, the dendrite fragmentation is one of the mechanism, dendrite fragmentation. The second mechanism is in which the dendrite or the grain detachment takes place. We know that the weld metal will be having the partially uh, melted grains. Uh, these partially melted grains are broken under the uh, movement of uh, the liquid metal uh, in the weld pool. So, these partially melted grains when broken will, uh, will be providing the fragments of uh, uh, these uh, partially melted grains and further these fragments are able to act as a nucleant and uh, these and when these are present in large amount uh, they are able to refine the grain structure. So, uh, the grain detachment from mm, grain detachment is the another mechanism which helps in refining the grain structure. Third mechanism is that we add from outside uh, in such a way that it is able to act as a nucleon. So, addition of the elements from outside which are able to act as a a nuclear helps in refining the grain structure and uh, uh, the, for example, addition of the TiB2 in aluminum weld metal or uh, TiAl3 in aluminum weld metal frequently helps to uh, act, frequently act as a uh, nuclear for uh, refining the aluminum uh, the weld structure. So, this approach when we add something from outside is called heterogeneous nucleation and uh, this is obtained by adding something from outside in form of the alvine element and this uh, is called inoculation where addition is made from outside. And the fourth approach is uh, the surface nucleation. In the surface nucleation, the weld metal which is solidifying is uh, subjected to the liquid nitrogen or the chilled air. <coughs> jet is applied over the weld pool. So, at the surface uh, some of the solidification takes place and in form of uh, the um, and when the solidification at the surface takes place in form of the dendrites uh, just at the surface these um, in the solid state tend to settle down gradually uh, towards the root of the weld and when in this process these get distributed uniformly in the weld region. Since uh, these are the dendrites which were developed in the beginning at the top level due to the application of the cold air jet. So, they are able to Mm, get solidify only at the surface and subsequently settlement in the weld zone leads to the develop leads to their presence in the entire weld zone and so they are able to act as a nucleant. So, this uh, surface cooling or surface uh, nucleation is uh, the another method where jet of uh, the chilled air is used for uh, uh, developing uh, for causing the solidification just at the surface layers in form of the dendrites and when these settle down during uh, the in course of the time they get distributed uniformly in the weld zone and uh, they are able to act as a nucleants to provide the grain refinement. So, these mechanisms have been explained here uh, due to the electromagnetic forces in the weld region the, there is always churning of the liquid metal and because of this movement and churning of the liquid metal whatever dendrites and the grains that are growing they are fragmented. So, the fragmentation leads to the presence of the fine and these fragmented particles here and there which are able to act as a nucleant and then partially grains because of these forces the partially melted grains are able to pull out of the solid and near from the fusion boundary zone and when these come out further these are able to act as a nucleant and for heterogeneous nucleation we add something from outside 
uh, in the weld zone which can act as a nucleant and for surface nucleation uh, basically the force cooling is done using the liquid nitrogen or the chilled air. So, that uh, solidification just at the surface layer takes place and when the sol uh, sort of solidification has taken place it, it, just, it just starts to settle down in the weld zone and uh, so thereby they gets uniformly distributed. And when these are, since these are of the same metal system present in the solid state and distributed in the mass of the weld metal, so they are able to act as a nucleant. And when these are present in the large quantity, they are able to provide uh, the desired uh, uh, grain refinement in the weld zone. So, uh, based on these mechanisms, uh, based on these fundamental mechanisms, various methods of the grain refinement have been developed. These are inoculation, arc pulsation, mechanical forces, electromagnetic forces and arc oscillation. So, in the in case of inoculation, we add from something from outside which is able to act as a nucleant and when these are present in the large quantity, we are able to have very defined grain structure. And uh, the aluminum, vanadium, titanium boride, titanium aluminide, these are the common kind of compounds which are added uh, in, in the weld zone for refining um, the steel and the aluminum welds. Arc pulsation is the another approach where very, uh, the heat input is reduced, so reduction in heat input uh, increases the nucleation rate and decreases the growth rate. And further, uh, uh, and when the nucleation rate increases, uh, the increase in nucleation rate results in the large number of uh, the nucleons for uh, uh, the solidification to take place and when these are present in the large amount, they are able to uh, refine the grain structure. Another approach is that it involves the uh, he, uh, alternate heating and cooling cycle, uh, because once there is a peak current then base current where when no major heat is developed mainly. Uh, the cooling takes place. So, the heating and cooling cycle continues uh, the, because of this kind of feature in our, our arc pulse arc welding processes, a uh, very small weld pool is developed and uh, uh, w when this solidifies very rapid solidification is also take uh, also takes place uh, uh, when the uh, pulse arc welding is done means arc pulsation helps to develop first the smaller weld pool. So, that the, the grain size uh, is uh, limited because of the smaller weld pool and uh, for, uh, further uh, reduced heat input increases the cooling rate and increase in cooling rate helps to refine the grain structure. So, th there, there are two principles uh, based on which the refinement is achieved by arc pulsation. One, it reduces the size of weld pool uh, because uh, each time when there is a peak current for a particular duration, the pool is developed and thereafter it is, its solidification takes place. So, size of the pool is very is small in case of arc pulsation and uh, second thing when arc pulsation is done, it uh, decreases the heat input significantly which in turn increases the cooling rate and increase in cooling rate uh, uh, being experienced by the weld pool uh, during the solidification helps in refining the grain structure. If we increase the heat input, then the uh, grain uh, size increases in terms of uh, uh, the secondary dendrite arm spacing. So, we know that uh, in case of the cast structures, the grain size is measured uh, in terms of the dendrite arm spacing. So, the, so the, this spacing uh, keeps on increasing with the increase in heat input. Since uh, in case of arc pulsation, we reduce the heat input. So, uh, this reduced heat input helps in developing the fine grain structure or very low then right arm is spacing in during the solidification of the weld zone. This is one typical uh, photograph uh, the, um, which uh, is showing the effect of the arc pulsation. This is the microstructure of the weld which was developed using the conventional arc welding process in which uh, the heat is developed continuously and uh, thereafter according to the heat input uh, the solidification takes place and when the structure is developed means so the weld is developed using the arc pulsation pulse where pulsing is done between the 120 to 160 degree one ampere current then it helps to refine the grain structure significantly while in case when the no arc pulsing is done and the continuous 160 ampere dc current is used it results in the coarser grain structure 
So, this uh, the refinement in the structure is attributed to somewhat higher cooling rate experienced by the weld zone as compared to the conventional arc welding process where no arc pulsing is done. Uh, the use of external force, uh, there are two approaches, one is use of mechanical vibration and another is electromagnetic forces. Uh, these forces are basically used to uh, create the disturbance in the weld zone, so that uh, the nucleants are developed by the fracture of the partially melted grain or fragmentation of the solidifying dendrites or uh, to achieve their improved distribution in the weld. So, when the uh, ex external force is used uh, to create the disturbance in the weld zone using either mechanical vibrations or the electromagnetic forces, uh, this helps in uh, having the fracture of the partially melted grains in the solidification stage and uh, the fragmentation of the solidifying grains, uh, dendrites. So, both these uh, actually effects uh, increase the number of uh, uh, the dendrites which are present uh, in the weld metal uh, and uh, these are since these are able to act as a nucleant for the weld metal because they are of the largely similar composition uh, as the um, that of the liquid metal that is why they are able to act as a nucleant. And when these are present in a large quantity they are able to act as a nucleant thus helps in refining the grain structure because uh, more the number of nucleants uh, present in the weld zone finer will be the grain structure. So, this is the, uh, the fundamental approach which is used uh, when the mechanical vibrations or the electromagnetic forces are used for refining the grain structure. So, in the case of uh, these approaches the fractured dendrite sector is the nucleant for the solidifying weld metal as they are of the same composition in the solid state. So, when this disturbance created by the mechanical vibrations or electromagnetic forces in the weld zone especially in the liquid metal helps to break the, uh, the solidifying dendrites or the partially melted grains and thus provides the large number of nucleants for solidification. Uh, similar to the arc oscillation or uh, uh, arc pulsation, the magnetic arc oscillation works on the similar line. Uh, because in this case uh, the arc is deflected intentionally um, to uh, provide the heat input in intermittent manner to the weld pool. So, the arc is deflected using the suitable electromagnetic field. Uh, so, the once the arc uh, since the arc oscillation affects the weld pool in the two ways it reduces the size of the weld pool and the alternating, uh, alternate heating and cooling is done. Basic in, in this approach basically arc is deflected from its path to such an extent that heat is provided in, inter, in, inter, in intermittent manner to the weld zone. So, this uh, redu reduction in heat input in, in uh, heat input uh, uh, first increases uh, the grain refinement due to the higher cooling rate at the same time intermittent heat uh, input to the weld zone further decreases the size of the weld pool. So, uh, and this is because we intentionally uh, deflect the arc uh, from its in intended path using the suitable electromagnetic uh, field. So, uh, arc since it is composed of the charged particles can be easily deflected using oscillating magnetic field and when the arc oscillation is achieved it affects the weld pool in the two ways. One it reduces the size of pool, another it increases, it actually effectively decreases the heat input uh, by uh, alternate heating and cooling similar to the arc pulsation. So, reduced heat input basically increases the uh, uh, cooling rate uh, uh, during the solidification and increased cooling rate helps in refining the grain structure. So, say this is the arc in normal position when uh, the uh, uh, electromagnetic force or magnetic force is applied, oscillating force is applied, arc is deflected from its path from one side to the another. So, this helps in reducing the net heat input as well as reducing the size of the weld pool. This uh, process uh, means uh, magnetic uh, uh, arc oscillation and uh, uh, arc oscillation and uh, the arc pulsation. These are the two approaches which are based on the simple principle of uh, reducing the heat input to the weld so that the higher cooling rate can be achieved at the same time size of the weld pool can be reduced. And when this is done we automatically get uh, the refined grain structure because of the high nucleation rate. So, uh, Another approach based on this uh, approach we can say that if the cooling rate is high then it will be leading to have the lower cooling rate. So, lower cooling rate uh, we know that uh, it will be taking long time to extract the heat from the weld zone and the longer time 
uh, which in turn will be resulting in the longer time uh, to solidify the weld and longer uh, solidification time uh, because of the increased time required for extraction of the heat from the weld zone uh, and um, because of this uh, a uh, lot of time is, uh, becomes available for the micro constituents to grow to the large extent due to the availability of the long solidification time. And because of this, uh, the grains grow to the larger extent. So, when the low cooling rate uh, is uh, experienced by the weld pool, we find that solidification is uh, uh, long, I mean, solidification takes place for the longer duration. and. Uh, um, the and the basically the liquid to solid state transformation takes place at the higher temperature. So, when this happens means a higher uh, when the liquid to solid state transformation temperature is high means the nucleation rate will be low and the growth rate will be high under these conditions and the low nucleation rate and high growth, growth rate facilitates the coarser grain structure. So, that is why when the um, high cooling rate, uh, uh, but when the cooling rate is high, our effective liquid to solid state transformation decreases, which in turn helps in increasing the nucleation rate and uh, decreasing the growth rate. So, increased nucleation rate and uh, uh, reduced growth rate helps in refining the grain structure. Uh, this is what we can see that uh, uh, we can compare that if the heat input is changed uh, from say in one case like some much dark welding process. Uh, so, uh, the steel uh, joint developed using uh, uh, the summer's dark welding process with the help of the two types of the heat inputs. One is uh, 3 kilo uh, joule per mm, another 6 kilo joule per mm. So, here uh, when the heat weld joint is developed using uh, the low heat input, we get the finer grain structure as compared to the case when uh, the high heat input is used and uh, very coarse columnar grains can be observed in the weld region across from the weld center to the fusion boundary. While such kind of a structure is not uh, visible from the photographs which are shown here. Now, we will be talking about the different reactions which uh, take place in the a uh, weld zone. Basically, uh, the three types of the reactions which are uh, commonly encountered in the weld zone uh, and uh, these are um, uh, weld zone and in the heat affected zone and uh, these are basically the gas metal reaction, liquid metal reaction and the solid state reaction. Gas metal reactions uh, basically occur due to the presence of the gases uh, in the arc region and um, uh, liquid metal reactions basically take place due to the formation of the low melting point phases uh, in the weld zone. Well, the solid state reactions are uh, encountered in the solid state whether the, uh, uh, these are happening in the weld zone or in the heat affected zone, but uh, most of the solid state reactions uh, happen uh, or take place in the heat affected zone where and there are three types of the common solid state reactions. One is the multistatic transformation leading to the embrittlement or hardening of the heat affected zone and the second is the lamellar tearing where uh, the cracking just below the heat affected zone uh, just below the fusion boundary takes place and the third is the hydrogen induced cracking which is also commonly encountered in the heat affected zone especially in case of the hardenable steels. So, we will be talking about these reactions one by one in the coming slides here. Starting with the gas metal reactions, we know that uh, the, when the uh, any metal system is brought uh, is heated to the high temperature and brought to the molten condition, uh, it becomes very active and it tends to react with the gases present all around it. So, when the, uh, when the uh, gases uh, present uh, in the weld zone, uh, uh, and due to the poor protection of the weld pool, the gases like hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen in the weld pool react with these uh, uh, the, with the molten weld metal and uh, produces number of undesirable effect. So, when these gases are present in the weld region uh, and uh, are in contact with the molten weld pool, uh, they form, uh, they lead to the development of the porosity and uh, the formation of oxides, nitrites. Uh, and uh, the hydrogen induced cracking and the embrittlement of the weld due to the formation of nitrites. So, there are various kinds of uh, uh, the effects which are observed when these gases are present uh, in the weld zone. 
<coughs> but the commonly uh, the two types of the uh, effects are observed. One is that when these gases are present in the large quantity um, with the molten weld pool, then uh, due to the entrapment of these gases, porosity uh, is developed in the weld region because. Uh, uh, when these gases are present in the large amount with the molten weld metal, they do not and if they do not get enough time for uh, escaping from the weld zone due to the high cooling rate uh, encountered during the welding. So, this leads to the entrapment of these gases uh, with the weld metal and produces the porosity. The second is these gases are very reactive, this is these uh, 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 liquid metal becomes very reactive at high temperature and tends to react with these gases by and when uh, the, uh, the molten well metal reacts with these gases it forms the oxides, nitrites, hydrides and if these are not removed by, by proper um, reactions between the flux and uh, with these impurities and then these may be left in the weld zone itself uh, as inclusion and if they are not removed from the weld zone and when these are present in the weld zone as inclusion, these will be acting as a site for the stress concentration and thus weakening the, uh, the weld joint. Therefore, it is always desired to avoid the presence of these gases in from the weld zone by providing the proper protection to the weld pool. The second uh, means third, uh, the, the third effect, important effect uh, uh, as far as the gas metal reactions is concerned, uh, the when the hydrogen is present in the large amount, uh, either it can get interrupted uh, to develop uh, the hydrogen induced porosity or uh, it can form hydrides or it can get diffused into, into the heat affected zone and increase the cracking tendency of the heat affected zone. Uh, and that uh, that happens at very low temperature and because of that uh, it is uh, it is also termed as cold cracking but it is always uh, assisted by the hydrogen so the cracking which is experienced in the heat affected zone is encouraged uh, by the presence of hydrogen so if the gases are present in the weld zone these will get diffused into the heat affected zone uh, through the liquid metal and um, uh, and will increase the cracking tendency in form of the hydrogen induced cracking and uh, when uh, th there is another side of uh, the, the presence of these gases is that uh, when the nitrogen is present in the large quantity in the weld zone the nitrogen will be reacting with the liquid uh, iron and forming the iron nitride. Since the iron nitride is very hard and brittle micro constituents and it is of the needle shape when it is present in the large quantity it decreases the uh, the ductility, toughness uh, of uh, the uh, and yield strength of the material to the greater extent. However, hardness and the uh, tensile strength of the material increases with the presence of these iron nitrides. So, just to show the effect of uh, these, uh, uh, we, we know that uh, it is important that the weld zone is well protected from the presence of all these gases. So, to, uh, to have the protection of uh, the weld pool from these gases uh, of the atmosphere, uh, the weld pool is protected by the different approaches in the different processes. For example, in the gas metal and the uh, GMAW and GTAW processes, inert gases are used uh, to shield uh, the to seal the weld pool from the atmospheric gases. Well, in case of the summer dark welding, molten flux is used. Uh, in case of the summer dark welding, the decomposition of the flux develops the inactive gases for protecting the weld pool. So, the different uh, processes use the different approaches for protecting the weld pool, but even after that uh, uh, they have the different uh, means the concentration of the oxygen and nitrogen uh, which in the weld zone which uh, has been developed using a particular process. Uh, uh, varies significantly with the process being used. So, means uh, the concentration of the oxygen and nitrogen in the weld zone uh, and in the weld metal will be affected by the process which is being used. Uh, in general, the summer dark welding process has the higher percentage of oxygen and uh, uh, the self cylindrical arc processes have the higher percentage of the nitrogen. So, when these gases whether it is oxygen and nitrogen they are present in the large quantity they will be reacting with the weld metal will be forming their nitrites and oxides and when these are present as inclusion they will be deteriorating the mechanical performance of the weld region. Just for an example when the nitrogen is present in the large amount as I said nitrogen reacts with the iron to form iron nitrites in form of needles which adversely affects the elongation 
tension and the resistance uh, means that is um, impact resistance in form of toughness while the yield strength and the ultimate strength um, increases with the increase in the nitrogen content and this is mainly attributed to the formation of the iron nitride and when these gases are interrupted in the weld zone uh, we know that uh, uh, the, uh, the interruptment of the gases uh, present in the weld zone due to the high solidification rate uh, uh, during the welding results in the porosity. Basically two types of the porosities are observed in the weld zone, one is the hydrogen induced porosity when the gas is, uh, gas is interrupted in the weld zone, another is interdendritic porosity. Interdendritic porosity is basically due to the, the poor fluidity and the low heat input uh, being provided to the weld. So that in the in interdendritic zone uh, due to the shrinkage, liquid metal is not able to reach in those areas. And uh, this uh, and this happens especially uh, when the, uh, the some of uh, the shrinkage leads to uh, leads to the development of the vacant spaces and which uh, are uh, found difficult to be filled in by the liquid metal due to its uh, flu poor fluidity. Uh, so so the low heat input and poor fluidity of the material basically leads to the interdendritic porosity. So proper correction of the alvine composition and uh, the heat input helps in controlling the interdendritic porosity and here in, in case of interdendritic porosity we are clearly able to observe the, mm, the that uh, the how the grains uh, and the grain structure is very clear while in case of the porosity which is developed with the presence of the gases it is mostly spherical in nature what has been shown here. So interdendritic porosity in the weld is mainly occurs due to the poor, poor fluidity of the molten weld metal and the rapid solidification. This is uh, this happens because of the low heat input. So this can be controlled by su suitably adjusting the composition of the weld zone so that fluidity increases at the same time cooling rate is uh, decreased. And for decreasing the cooling rate, we can use the approach of either preheating the plate so that heat extraction rate is decreased or the heat input is increased. So increase in heat input will be reducing the uh, increase in heat input will be reducing the cooling rate, which in turn will be increasing the solidification time so that the liquid metal will have enough time to settle down even and take care of the shrinkage in the liquid state which is taking place in order to overcome the interdendritic porosity. Uh, now we will see the liquid metal uh, reactions, uh, there are two main aspects related to the liquid metal reactions. One is the formation of the low melting uh, point phases uh, during the solidification. Uh, in, we know that uh, uh, it is uh, frequently uh, the phosphorus and uh, the sulphur concentration in the weld zone and in the steel is controlled uh, within the limit of 0 0.05 percent. It is not allowed to have the phosphorus and sulphur greater than 0 0.05, but if the sulphur is uh, present in the steel greater than 0 0.05, then it uh, increases the tendency of the solidification cracking, primarily uh, because of uh, the fact that when a sulphur is present in the large quantity it forms the iron sulphide and which solidifies at very low temperature. Since the pure uh, iron solidifies at around 15, 40 degree centigrade while the iron sulphide melts around or uh, solidifies around 730 or so. So because of this huge difference in the solidification temperature leads to the development of the solidification cracking. And another aspect related to the liquid metal reaction is the formation of slag. Uh, due to the reaction of the liquid metal with the gases present in the weld zone increases the inclusion and uh, reduces the cleanliness of the weld. So when, uh, when there is a presence of the large amount of uh, the gases in the weld zone forming the large amount of the slag and slag low, low melting point slag which is uh, with the weld metal if it does not get enough time to come up to the surface or if it is found it is being formed in a very large quantity then uh, it will have the increased tendency to get interrupted in the weld region and thus uh, these will be present in form of the inclusions. So uh, it will be decreasing the cleanliness of the weld. So uh, the, the, there are two important aspects one is the formation of the low melting point phases and another is 
the formation of the large amount of the slag which will be increasing the tendency to get interrupt in the weld zone and thus increasing the inclusion formation tendency in the weld metal and these uh, inclusions may be in form of the oxides nitrites and uh, when these are present in large amount they will be adversely affecting the cleanliness of the weld and when these are present in the large amount they will be deteriorating the mechanical performance of the weld zone because these will be frequently acting as a, a site for the stress concentration a site of the weakness and uh, will be easily facilitating the crack nucleation and growth uh, from these locations and uh, facilitating the premature failure of the component under the external load conditions especially under the fatigue load conditions. So, uh, the solidification cracking is one of the very important aspects related uh, with the weld metals. We know that solidification cracking is the interdendritic cracking of the weld metal mostly along the weld center line it, and it occurs in the very last stage of the solidification. Uh, so, here uh, to understand this, so we know that uh, if the entire weld pool solidifies at one temperature, then there would not be any problem uh, because in, in the situation when everything is solidifying and transforming from the liquid to solid state, then all the things will be in the solid state and uh, then it will be coming down to the room temperature. Uh, if, but in, in the situation when some of the micro constituents or some of the things are solidifying at high temperature while others are solidifying at low temperature. So, the portion which has already been solidified will be subjected to the residual tensile stresses while the, the portion which is already in the liquid state will not be able to take up these tensile residual stresses. And uh, when this continues for a long time in the large amount, uh, then this leads to the development of uh, the crack. So, uh, th there are two uh, basically regions behind the solidification cracking. One is uh, say uh, this is uh, the plates, these are the weld center line and this is the portion which has been welded. And we are here arc and this is the weld zone. So, and if we see it in, in the front view, then we will be able to have it view like this. So, the, if this uh, base metal is having the micro constraints such that the few are solidifying at high temperature and others are at low temperature. So, uh, say most of the metal systems is if it is solidifying um, at high temperature say around 1400 degree centigrade and uh, developing the solid like this from both the sides. So, whatever the low melting point phases are present they will be pushed to the weld center. So, one solidifying at high temperature say 1400 degree centigrade and if the low melting point phases are being formed they will be pushed along the weld center. So, and say another is solidifying at 800 degree centigrade then this uh, the low melting point phases will represent will remain along the weld center line until uh, the 800 degree centigrade temperature is achieved. But we know that since the remaining portion has already been solidified, so it will keep on uh, cooling down uh, from say 1400 degree centigrade to the 800 degree centigrade and uh, during this con cooling process it will try to contract. And this contraction will lead to the development of the tensile stresses and when these tensile stresses are set up they will be basically acting on the weak zone and the weak zone is one where still we have the liquid metal to solidify and therefore most of the stresses tend to uh, tend to uh, localize uh, along the weld center line where we have the liquid metal is still sol solidify and because uh, since the liquid metal cannot sustain any kind of the tensile res residual stresses and therefore, uh, the cracks are developed basically along the weld center line and this kind of crack development tendency will be more when especially in the cases where solidification temperature range is very wide. Something is solidifying at very high temperature and uh, temperature range is very wide 
or the second thing even if the we even if we are having the solidif uh, very wide solidification temperature the cracks will not be developing until the residual recesses are developed so for development of the cracks it is necessary that uh, residual recesses are present so if there are no tensile residual recesses then there won't be any cracking so uh, uh, the even if, even if the solidification temperature range is wide if you can control the development of the residual tensile stresses then it will help in controlling the uh, solidification cracking so all the factors that increase the residual tensile stresses especially along the weld center line uh, they, they will be uh, increasing uh, or they will be affecting the solidification cracking tendency. So, among those factors that uh, affect uh, the development of the solidification uh, development of the residual stresses they will be affecting the solidification cracking tendency. So, the, for the important thing is that res residual stress development no residual stresses no cracking so uh, so all the factors like the uh, thermal expansion coefficient of the metal or the size of uh, the weld zone which is being developed uh, or the kind of restraints which have been put in all those factors will be affecting the residual stress development and so they will be affecting the solidification cracking tendency so important thing is this that uh, for solidification cracking to take place residual stresses should be present and the very wide solidification temperature should be there if the if the metal uh, further in in some of the cases when even when the solidification temperature range is not very wide but at a high temperature material is very weak and it is of low ductility then also the solidification cracking is observed because most of the stresses tend to localize along the weak zone uh, which is mostly at uh, the weld center uh, along the weld center line and because of that also uh, the solidification cracking tendency uh, is observed and so we, we can see here this is the typical uh, the, the weld joint of the aluminum where the solidification crack is running along the weld center this is the fusion boundary and this is the weld zone so at the weld center only the crack is uh, running uh, this is one form of uh, uh, this is also called hot tearing and it is mainly encountered in in terms of, uh, uh, due to the presence of uh, uh, sulfur and the uh, lead in case of steels. So, in the steels when sulfur and lead are present in the large amount these increase the tendency of the solidification cracking tendency or hot tearing and sulfur because the sulfur forms the iron sulphide which has very low melting point around 700 degree centigrade then the pure iron which is around 1540 and uh, to control the solidification cracking tendency it is necessary that uh, uh, the adverse effect of the iron sulphide is reduced and to reduce the adverse effect, effect of the iron sulphide on the cracking tendency uh, means uh, which is increasing the cracking tendency normally sulphur is added uh, sorry manganese is added when the manganese is added it forms the manganese sulphide which uh, solidifies at much higher temperature than the iron sulphide and further uh, the iron sulphide which is formed is formed of or is formed in form of the thin films which further increases the cracking tendency while the, um, um, when a manganese is added uh, it uh, forms the manganese sulphide which solidifies at high temperature and another it forms the manganese sulphide in form of the globules which uh, further decrease the cracking tendency so another aspect is that you use the low sulfur and the low uh, um, lead steel for the welding purpose so these are the two things which can be done uh, as far as uh, 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 the control of the hot tearing is done apart from this uh, there are many other aspects which can be tried for uh, controlling the solidification cracking about that we will be talking in the subsequent slides uh, so uh, from the above it is clear that there are two main factors that contribute towards the development of crack at high temperature and uh, during the solidification cracking one is the development of the tensile residual stresses and the second is that material is having the low strength and ductility at high temperature uh, which is mostly due to the presence of the low melting point phases in the interdendritic region especially near the end of the solidification or the last stage of the solidification and this is called solidification cracking now uh, we will see uh, the cold cracking this is an another type of uh, the uh, cracking uh, or the um, cracking which is uh, observed and uh, this uh, is uh, one type of the um, solid state reaction 
uh, which uh, so so we, we we have talked about the gas metal reactions and then liquid metal reactions in the gas metal reactions we effect of oxygen nitrogen and uh, in the liquid metal reactions we have seen the solidification cracking and uh, now you will see the solid state reactions uh, solid state reactions uh, uh, occur in three forms one is uh, uh, very embrittlement and hardening of the heat affected zone due to the martensitic transformation and the second is uh, the cold cracking which uh, mainly occurs in the presence of the hydrogen and the third uh, one is the lamellar tearing. Uh, so, uh, these one uh, these will be described one by one uh, now. Uh, cold cracking uh, since it occurs at very low temperature after completion of the weld when it comes down to the room temperature because of this it is called cro cold cracking. Since it, it is uh, mainly caused by the presence of hydrogen that is why it is also called hydrogen induced cracking and it occurs after some time of the welding therefore, it is called delayed cracking and the main reason for this is that, that the hydrogen is dissolved in steel is still in the weld zone and in the heat affected zone. At the same time tensile regular stresses are also developed in the weld zone and the heat affected zone and uh, uh, the very crack sensitive the structure like the martensitic transformation uh, leads to the development of the very high hardness and the brittleness. So, these are the three deadly combination the factor of the, the uh, so uh, uh, means a combination of these three factors like development of the tensile residual stresses, presence of the hydrogen and uh, the embrittlement due to the martens crack sensitive structure like martensite. When these three are present uh, um, the weld tends to uh, weld joint tends to crack uh, uh, from the heat affected zone uh, after the welding. Depending upon the severity of these components like uh, the how much amount of the hydrogen is present, how many much uh, residuals are there and how much increase in the hardness and the brittleness is taking place due to the martensitic transformation that will directly be affecting the cold cracking. Larger is the amount of the hydrogen the more um, the tensile stresses are being developed and increased embrittlement if taking place that will be adversely uh, that will be increasing the tendency of uh, the cold cracking. So, here we know that uh, it is delayed cracking because it occurs after some time of the welding. So, depending upon the kind of uh, the stresses which are uh, uh, tensile residual stresses which are there or externally applied stresses are present, uh, the time required for fracture to take place or uh, this delayed cracking to take place will be governed by um, the kind of stresses which are there. So, if we see here these are the this is a typical diagram showing that. Uh, uh, that how the stress uh, or the tensile stresses acting in the weld joint will be affecting the, the time required for fracture or time required for initiation of the crack by the delayed cracking. If we can see the lower is the stresses, uh, lower is the <coughs> higher is the stress, lower time it will take to initiate. So, this is the no damage zone, here the damage is initiated where crack grows gradually and here complete fracture takes place. So, if you can see for a given stress the time required for damage. So, if this is the stress level then this is the time when crack will initiate then it will grow in this period and then fracture will take place after this much time. And so, if, if further we can see that if the tensile stresses are below certain level then there would not be uh, the nucleation and growth of the crack by this delayed cracking. And uh, if the stresses are above certain level then immediately after the welding we can see that uh, the cracking has taken place and fracture has uh, taken place. So, uh, this stress versus the time relationship for development of the delayed crack and uh, the fracture is shown from this diagram. Further, if, uh, uh, if the hydrogen concentration is different is varying in the weld zone then for the low concentration um, the it, it will for a given stress level low concentration uh, low hydrogen concentration weld will be surviving for longer period as compared to the medium and the high hydrogen concentration. So, with the increase in presence of the hydrogen in the weld region under the identical conditions the weld joint will be performing for longer period and if the hydrogen content is too high at the too high stresses it uh, the fracture will be occurring immediately after the development of weld. So, in order to control the cold cracking various approaches are used which uh, uh, we have seen that there are three uh, factors which uh, uh, contribute in big way on the development of the crack um, uh, development of cold crack. One is tensile residual stresses 
two is the presence of hydrogen and three is embrittlement due to the cracks in the structure like martensite. So, efforts are made in order to avoid the presence of these three factors. So, the first one like the hydrogen presence is avoided or reduced by using the low hydrogen electrode. So, that the hydrogen concentration present in the weld zone and the heat affected zone can be reduced. A preheating of the base metal helps in reducing the cooling rate encountered by the weld zone and the heat affected zone during the welding and a reduced cooling rate decreases the martensitic transformation tendency and it forms um, uh, the soft phases in the larger amount. So, the hardness is reduced and the crack sensitive structure is also avoided and uh, the use of the low hydrogen uh, further preheating also increases the time available uh, for the hydrogen to come out at high temperature because most of the high temperature transformations will be occurring and due to with the increase of the preheat. So, preheating helps in uh, having the high temperature transformation of the austenite to the softer phases like perlite and bainite. At the same time, it will have the higher means longer period for uh, uh, stay at a higher temperature that will further help in uh, um, release of the hydrogen dissolved in the heat affected zone and the weld metal. Then the use of the austenitic electrode, since the austenite can dissolve large amount of the hydrogen in it. So, um, the when it is present, uh, uh, it will uh, and further it is softer also. So, that it will be decreasing the hydrogen, uh, it, it will be decreasing the tensile residual stresses and uh, it will be decreasing the amount of hydrogen going towards the heat affected zone and thereby it will be reducing the cracking tendency. So, uh, reducing the hardness and the brittle, uh, brittleness of the heat affected zone is another uh, approach for this purpose basically the preheating is done and uh, reducing the tensile stresses for reducing the tensile stresses in the weld zone uh, basically preheating is done so that most of the things uh, uh, cool down uh, means the temperature gradient from the weld zone to the heat affected zone is reduced by preheating and uh, because of that uh, the tensile stresses are reduced uh, and uh, since the uh, and the use of the austenitic electrodes. Since the austenitic electrodes are of the lower yield strength as compared to that of the hardened steels. Uh, so, when the electrode itself uh, means weld metal itself is of the lower yield strength then that helps to reduce uh, the localization of the tensile stresses in the a weld zone and in the heat affected zone because the, when these stresses are set up uh, the weld zone itself undergoes the, uh, the deformation and uh, thereby helps in reducing the magnitude of the tensile stresses which are being developed. So, in order to control the HIC as a thumb rule uh, no preheating is done to control the HIC up to the carbon equivalent of 0.45 and thickness below 35 mm and uh, the system is not considered to be the hydrogen assisted cracking if the hardness is below 35 VHN. Now, lamellar tearing uh, is the another uh, the solid state reaction uh, which occurs in the heat affected zone and uh, it is a form of the uh, HAZ cracking which occurs in the rolled and forged products especially uh, in, in, in the line in the direction parallel to the fusion line. Um, in the uh, along the fusion line parallel to the surface or elongated uh, the sulphide inclusions are or when elongated uh, sulphide inclusions are present in the rolling direction. So, th these are the two things uh, uh, that uh, the HAZ cracking takes place in the rolled or forged products uh, especially uh, when the fusion line is parallel to the surface or uh, elongated uh, sulphide inclusions are present in the rolling direction. A susceptibility for this kind of cracking is found to be more when the reduction in area that is the ductility, a short transverse direction or the, 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 the through thickness direction ductility is uh, in terms of the percentage reduction, reduction in area is greater than 15 then the weld zone is not found susceptible for the lamellar tearing and it is found highly susceptible when the reduction in area is lesser than the 5 percent. So, this kind of uh, the cracking is mainly observed in the heat affected zone and um, it uh, occurs due to the decohesion of the sulphide inclusions uh, in presence of the tensile stresses. Other aspects related with this will be taken up in the next presentation. In the next presentation, we will also talk about uh, uh, the weldability of the aluminum alloys and uh, uh, that what are the important factors that should be kept in mind while in the welding aluminum. So, thank you for your attention.